And these are huge. Let's do a teardown of a Garo Evasec EV fast charger. I found this unit at the scrapyard and because it was too heavy to just bring it home, I took it apart at site. And then we have opened it up. You can see the inside of it. At the bottom, we have a pretty large transformer. You can see the wrench on top there and the primary and secondary windings that are separated from each other. And on the left side of the transformer, you can see a choke, some capacitors, which are those uh, silvery cylinders. Just for safety, I have checked the capacitors and uh, confirmed that they are discharged. That's why there is a multimeter. And here's a closer look. You can see the wrench on the transformer and the choke and the capacitor. Here you can see the capacitors both of them they are 900 volt and 2000 microfarads and you can see those thick wires going to the ev fast charger connectors and here's above the capacitor you can see in the center of the picture and a little bit to the left we have these uh, contactors which are cylindrical shape there are four of them and each can break 500 amps DC at 900 volts and these contactors control the output of the high current DC fast charging and a bit above the contactors we can see a diode module and underneath the diode module there is IGBT and underneath the IGBT we have the two rectifiers and those are not seen in the picture here and on the right side of the diode module we have a current transducer and the wire is going to the choke and after the choke it goes to the capacitor. And on the left side of the picture we can see a, another contactor and a big resistor. This is the discharge resistor of the capacitor bank when the, when the unit is turned off. It discharges the capacitor so there is no voltage across the DC terminals of the connector which you connect to the EV. Underneath the current transducer we have a heat sink with three 4.7 kilo ohm loading resistors for the output and a bit further on the right which can't be seen on the picture we have three soft start resistors for a transformer three phase and they are 47 ohm each now I will be removing the components and we will have a look what's left so here you can see the transformer the windings and everything is in aluminium, no copper in that. And the capacitors are removed. You can see the DC choke, where the positive terminal from the diode was connected. And the thick output wires. Diode and IGBT are removed. And there's the rectifier for the three phase. And the circuit board is for the controlling of the gate of the IGBT and in there we have the control circuits there are pretty many circuit boards in there and there was the contactor for a discharge Yes, here's the unit at the scrapyard. Here are the components I recovered from the DC fast charger. What is IGBT here, diode, the capacitors, the type 2 and the CC2 connectors. We'll do a teardown of these in a separate video. I put them on the side here. Here are the two capacitors. 2000 microfarads at 900 volts DC. With a current transducer. With a voltage transducer here. I recovered a circuit board with a lot of connectors, which can come handy. With a heat sink with some loading resistors and soft start resistors. 
a bunch of uh, DC contactors, five of them in total. And just for fun, this uh, HRC fuse, 125 amps with a striker pin. So this pin will come out when the fuse blows. And we got a bunch of uh, high current cable. And here are some information on the capacitor. And these are huge. 0 0.8 kilojoules of energy can be stored in one of these. And now let's draw a schematic of this EV charger and see how it works. And here's a simplified schematic of it. We have a three phase input here, 400 volts. And in this drawing, I just put a delta Y configuration of the transformer. It could be different. And in this configuration, we have a 690 volts output on the secondary, which is the square root of three for the input voltage. We got a three phase full bridge rectifier. And after the rectifier, we have a buck converter circuit. No smoothing after the rectifier. The ripple, the three phase ripple, which uh, looks like this, goes uh, to the IGBT. And how this works is that the IGBT lets uh, some cycles through and disconnects and lets more cycles through. In this example here, we have a 50% duty cycle and this is one and a half uh, cycles as shown here. And this is the single phase example, but here on the lower picture, this is a three phase. So when you rectify three phase, you get these uh, pulses and these nodes here correspond with the second phase. So the first phase is here, second here, and third here. And when you rectify it, you turn the lower pieces of the sine wave up. And this is the lower parts of the sine wave of the first, second, and third phase. And it repeats. So rectified three phase looks much more like DC than rectified single phase. And when this opens, current goes through here to the choke. And the choke has so large uh, inductance, so it limits the output current hence lowering the voltage and the IGBT turns off. If the core isn't saturated, the voltage on the output hasn't reached the input voltage. So that's how it can control how much voltage there is across these capacitors. And that is done by this voltage transducer. And when the IGBT turns off, we still have a lot of energy stored in the core like a magnetic field and that will go through this diode and still let a current charge these capacitors and charge the electric vehicle which is connected to the circuit and the cycle repeats. There are a lot of videos on YouTube that explains how a buck converter or a boost converter works. So this was just a simplified explanation. But this circuit for a EV charger will work will work with the 50 Hertz, which is on the grid. And hence why this choke here was so large. You need a lot of iron to prevent it from saturating with this low frequency. So here we go. This is what's in a DC fast charger.